How's it going everyone and welcome to a sort of off-topic episode compared to the previous lessons you might have seen this channel here. Now what I want to talk about in this episode is the fact that according to my lesson planner within the next two or so lessons, you're going to learn how to upload a website to the internet. Which I know some people watching this course you might be thinking that it's a subtle way of me saying that you're now done learning HTML and CSS, which is not true. And I just want to get it out there that there's so much more to learn when it comes to HTML and CSS. And this also brings me to another point because, and again, as, as you probably have asked you guys this at the beginning of this course, but you need to ask yourself, why exactly are you learning how to make a website? Are you just learning how to make a website because you want to make a portfolio for yourself? Do you want to work professionally either as a freelance web developer or as a person sitting inside a company making websites? What exactly do you want to do as a web developer? Because depending on what you want to do, then you might be done after the how to upload a website to the internet episode, or you might have a lot more you need to learn when it comes to web development, depending on what exactly you want to work with or not work with. So what I want to do is sort of give you guys a overview over exactly what you need to look into if you want to become a web developer and work with it professionally inside a company or as a freelance web developer. So what I'm going to do now before I start explaining how the universe works and how uh, you become a full-fledged web developer and that sort of thing is I want to say you're not done learning HTML and CSS after learning how to upload a website to the internet, even though that is coming up really fast. Uh, the reason I'm making that episode is because up until now, you've learned most of the basic technical skills that goes into making a website using HTML and CSS. Now, there's still a lot more practical examples we haven't talked about yet. And it's very important we talk about how to do certain things with HTML and CSS. And that's what I'm going to focus on after, you know, showing you guys how to actually upload a website to the internet. So just so you're aware that you should probably continue watching this course after learning how to upload a website, because there's going to be a lot of cool tutorials coming afterwards, focusing more on the practical aspects of how to make a website. So when it comes to working professionally as a web developer, there's mainly three different areas that you can focus on and specialize in. You have design, you have front-end development, and back-end development. Design is when you make the actual design for a website, either inside a design program or creating mock-ups on a piece of paper or whatever you might want to do when you create designs. But these are the people who focuses on a website being usable, having good user experience, testing these website mock-ups out on uh, users before they actually start coding the website. So these are the people who make sure the website looks the way it's supposed to before you start spending a lot of money and resources and actually developing the website using code. And then we have the front end developers who are the people who takes the design from the designers and makes it into something you can actually see inside the browser. So these are the people who takes the design and makes it into HTML, CSS, JavaScript, those sort of front end programming languages and makes it visual inside the browser. And then we have the back end developers who takes the website that the front end developers made and makes it dynamic so you actually have things going on in the background of the website that you don't actually see going on visually inside the browser. An example of this could be a login system where you have a username and a password field, and then a login button at the top of the website. When the user types in their username and password and clicks the login button, then something needs to happen in the background of the website that actually checks the database to see if this is the correct user with the correct password. And if it is, then lock them into the website. And this is what the backend developers take care of. At least that's a small example of a very small thing that the backend developer could do inside a website. Now, backend developers are usually the people who takes care of servers, databases, and that sort of thing. So right now you're actually studying to become a front-end developer. Now, when it comes to working in a company, at least in big companies, you tend to specialize in one area, meaning that if you're a really good front-end developer, then you don't need to learn backend development and design. And of course, the same goes for the other fields. You might specialize in one of those instead. Now, when it comes to smaller companies, you might end up in a company where they can't afford having a designer, a front-end developer, and a back-end developer. So in this case, you would actually end up making all three different aspects of web development, meaning that in some cases, depending on if you want to work in a smaller company, it might be worth if you looked into a little bit of everything. So you sort of overall specialize in in all the three different areas. 
And the same thing goes if you want to work for yourself as a freelance web developer, because in that case, you also need to learn a little bit of everything in order to give the client whatever they ask for. And this is why it's so important for me to point out that if you plan to stop learning web development after you have seen my how to upload a website to the internet episode, then it's very important that if you want to work as a freelance web developer, that you explain to the client that there's certain things you cannot give them. You cannot give them the design aspect unless you study that by yourself. You cannot give them any kind of backend functionality such as a forum, a login system, a contact form, you know, that sort of thing that requires a server or a server-side language. So it's very important that you know exactly what your limitations are if you plan to just learn HTML and CSS. Now my recommendation after learning HTML and CSS, if you want to learn something else besides HTML and CSS when it comes to web development, is to learn a little bit of JavaScript. Even though you don't want to specialize in front-end development, still I think you should learn a little bit of JavaScript because when it comes to front-end development or just web development in general, it's a very good idea to know everything or at least the three core languages when it comes to front-end development. And the three core languages are HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now, if you want to specialize in backend development, then I typically recommend after learning HTML and CSS and a little bit of JavaScript that you start looking into PHP code. And again, I notice a lot of people writing in the comments right now saying, why are you recommending PHP? Why not Python or why not something else? Because there's a lot of different languages out there, even when it comes to JavaScript, a lot of people, well, most people agree that you should learn JavaScript, but there's also a lot of other front-end programming languages you could learn instead of JavaScript if you want to become a front-end developer. But again, JavaScript is sort of standard here if you want to be a front-end developer. Now, when it comes to backend, there's a lot of programming languages, but the most common one is PHP, which is what I recommend you get into if you want to learn backend development after learning, like I said, HTML, CSS, and a little bit of JavaScript. Now, I don't want you guys to watch this episode and be all demotivated after you're done watching the video. I actually planned this to be a motivating video so you can actually see what exactly you need to learn when it comes to, you know, different aspects of being a web developer. And again, when it comes to, you know, figuring out what exactly you need to learn as a web developer, I can only recommend that you try to go to a job site and search for the type of job that you want and see what kind of requirements they have for that specific position so you can sort of see what kind of skills they say you should have in order to get a job interview at the place and that's the best way to figure out what exactly you need to learn if you want to get you know that specific type of job and if you're still a bit confused about what exactly goes into the different areas when it comes to web development then i do have an episode on my channel explaining uh, the different areas of web development you could look into such as you know front end backend, CMS systems, SEO optimization, that sort of thing, and frameworks. We, we can keep going. There's so many things when it comes to web development. And again, like I said, I don't want this to be a demotivating video. I want you guys to watch this and be inspired to keep learning web development because don't get me wrong, what you've learned so far with HTML and CSS is very impressive. It's a bit tough to get started with web development when you have never been in that sort of area or that sort of field before. And it can get sort of exhausting to, to get your mind used to thinking in web development. So I hope you guys are proud of yourself and sort of clap yourself on the shoulder for getting this far when it comes to at least HTML and CSS. Because HTML and CSS is the fundamentals. You can't continue to JavaScript and you can't continue to PHP without learning HTML and CSS first. You need to start with HTML and CSS. So what you have now is the foundation to continue learning web development in the future, which is what you guys should be striving towards. At least I think so. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little episode and I hope not that it was too demotivating to listen to. I really hope that you guys got inspired by it. And like I said, within the next couple of lessons, we'll actually learn how to upload a website to the internet. We will talk about something called meta tags and, and just some general things that you need to have in order before you start releasing a website to the internet. There's some basics that you need to have inside a website that are not really too complicated, but you need to have it. And we're gonna do that step by step so you can actually see what exactly you need to have inside a website before we start, like I said, uploading it. So hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time.